welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, a witness in Ulisametu's trial stuns the court, says the accused person's company got paid 400 million naira by the NSA's Office for Security Services. Federal government insists war against corruption will continue regardless of blackmail by opposition. EFCC clamps down on former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki, seizes his property in Kaduna State. And South Africa's police authorities question three policemen over the death of a Nigerian in their custody. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria leaves rates unchanged after its first Monetary Policy Committee meeting for the year. And on sports news tonight, Guinea's lone goal victory ends of the Super Eagles campaign at the African Nations Championship in Kigali. And from Abuja, I'm Linda Akive. President Mohamed Buhari heads to Nairobi on an official visit to participate in the Kenya-Nigeria Forum. A federal high court in Abuja today got a shocker when one of the officials in the office of the former National Security Advisor and a third witness in the trial of the PDP National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Ulisamitu, told the court that the accused person's company allegedly collected 400 million naira for security services. The third witness also says that 78 other companies were given contracts from the former NSA's office, but there appears to be no proof of execution. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo reports. Spokesman for the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Olisametu, arrives at the Federal High Court. He enters the courtroom with his relations, political associates and shakes hands with his lawyers. On this, the second day of the trial, a third prosecution witness and a lawyer in the office of the National Security Advisor, Mr. Bali Ndam, gives evidence on how the spokesman for the opposition party, Mr. Metu, allegedly received money from the office of the National Security Advisor. The witness also tendered the schedule of payment which authorized the central bank to make payment to Desra Limited belonging to Mr. Ulisa Metu. Led in evidence by the prosecutor Sylvanas Tahir, he informed Justice Okon Abang that the Office of the National Security Advisor did not award a contract to Destra Investment for which it received 400 million naira. An attempt to tender three documents as evidence for the prosecution by the witness was opposed by counsel to Mr. Metu. According to the defense counsel, Mr. Onyechi Ibazu, the witness is not the author of the three documents. Justice Okon Abang overruled the objection and admitted the three documents as evidence. On the cross-examination by counsel to Mr. Metu, the witness read out a portion of the evidence which was to the effect that due process was followed in awarding the said contract. The witness also read out a portion of the tendered document which stated that the payment was for the purchase of three operational vehicles. He also agreed that the schedule of payment admitted by the court which authorized the transfer of the money to the Desra company account was not forged because it emanated from the office of the National Security Advisor and was authorized by the then NSA. While the prosecution declined to comment on the day's proceedings, this is what the defense counsel had to say. Look, something is obvious here. The system is working. And that is the beauty of a democratic governance. Uh, the government thinks it has a case, it brings the case to court. The court is there sitting, listening to the witnesses. The prosecution has presented a, a witness and we are at liberty to cross examine. And we have done so to our satisfaction. And we follow the process as it runs. So we are very satisfied with what has happened today. <laughs> Now, following an agreement between the prosecution and the defense in this suit, the trial judge justice Obong Abang adjourned the case to the 27th of January 2016. First, to hear the application filed by Mr. Metu seeking a variation of his bail conditions and then to continue trial. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. And the issue continues as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has sealed off buildings allegedly owned by the embattled former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki in Kaduna State. 
Mr. Dasuki, a retired colonel who was the national security advisor to former President Goodluck Jonathan, is being investigated by the Anti-Graft Agency over his alleged misappropriation of about $2.1 billion meant for the procurement of arms during the last administration. Some of the seized houses belonging to Colonel Dasuki are said to be a hotel complex located on Rabba Road, Malali GRA in Kaduna Metropolis, and a mansion still under construction on Sunni Sami Road, also in Malali GRA. Also, some properties allegedly belonging to a serving military officer who was also linked with the arms scandal have been confiscated by the commission in Kaduna. And as the fight against corruption intensifies, the federal government has appealed to legal and media practitioners to assist in the ongoing crusade. The Minister of Information and Culture, Alhaji Lai Mohammed, at a press briefing in Abuja, said some who have been indicted by the government are already working to distract and frustrate efforts to prosecute them. He, however, promised the government's partnership with the judiciary to ensure that corrupt public officials are prosecuted. When I met with the news and political editors in Lagos on Sunday, I said, among other things, that the government is aware that in fighting corruption, corruption will also fight back. I also said that those who stole us dry, dry are powerful. They have newspapers, they have radio and television stations, as well as online platforms. And they have an army of supporters who are continuously deriding the government war against corruption. Well, I can tell you today that corruption is already fighting back, and they are fighting hard and dirty. Sponsored articles have started appearing in newspapers and in the social media. We know that the sole purpose of these attacks is to distract attention from the war on corruption. We have achieved one of the things we set out to achieve, which is to sensitize Nigerians that corruption is a real counter war. Two, on the issue of judiciary, if you remember, even at the last press conference here, I did say that we are appealing to everybody, including lawyers and judiciary, to see that this is a national yeah, in, 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 in national campaign. And I can assure you that we have made presentation and the judiciary is ready and willing to cooperate with us. Minister of Information and Culture, Alhaji Lai Mohammed. In the meantime, the Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, Mr. Ben Angwe, has called for international cooperation to fight what he terms economic terrorism here in Nigeria. Mr. Angwe told a White House security delegation that diversion of funds meant for fighting insurgency to other countries puts the lives of many Nigerians at risk. He also calls for the repatriation of funds recovered. The U.S. delegation is meeting with the Human Rights Commission to help improve the justice and security sectors of the country for better service delivery. This meeting between the National Human Rights Commission and the 10-man delegation from the White House Security and Governance Initiative is one of a series of meetings with the United States on security in Nigeria. This consultative phase, which involves experts from the United States Department of Justice, Homeland Security, International Development and Governance, is set to establish points of engagement for enhanced security and justice delivery in Nigeria. We are uh, looking to identify areas of mutual interest uh, between, uh, for Nigeria and the United States that, when addressed, we hope would uh, improve the ability of Nigeria's security and justice institutions to carry out their mandates more efficiently and effectively and in accordance with democratic values. The Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, Bem Angwe, is pleased with these discussions, which he says comes at a time when Nigeria needs international support to fight insurgency and economic terrorism. The economic terrorists are those that have had cause to terrorize the country using their positions in government to misappropriate and take away the resources that are meant for ensuring good governance in Nigeria and in ensuring that human rights are not only protected, 
but are also enforced. On the other hand, we have insurgents who have continued to import weapons into this country. These weapons are being used by the terrorists, the insurgents, in killing Nigerians and destroying properties here in Nigeria. We need international cooperation that will put to an end the continued activities of these two forms of terrorists in this country. Human rights violations by the Nigerian military in its insurgency fight also formed part of discussions here. And while the head of the U.S. delegation will not openly comment, he says weakness in governance is a root cause of such abuses, which he hopes the consultative meetings will address. Omelogo Nadi, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, Minister of Power, Works and Housing begins nationwide inspection of projects to ensure adequate budgetary provision. That's in a moment. Please join us again.